Hello everybody and a very warm welcome in this edition of Expressions and I am your host Arpita. Today in Expressions we are going to deal with the topic which has been the burning issue of the entire country. The gang rape of the 23 year old girl in the capital has sparked nationwide protests and a very rare national debate. Affected by all these related activity, the famous artist Seema Kohli has directed and filmed a movie called It Was a Summer Afternoon. Her movie deals with the issue of abuse. The film is going to be aired at the India Art Summit and also at the Kala Ghora Festival. Through this movie, the artist wishes to deal with the demons of her past and also wants to express her feelings which were suppressed in her for decades. She also wishes to make an example and tell people to raise their voice against abuse, against injustice. Let's have a word with her. Artist Seema Kohli has created her own niche in the world of contemporary art. Her creative repertoire is eclectic, encompassing a wide range of mediums, ranging from paintings, murals and films to installations, also sculptures and performances. Each is a unique expression of her style. Centuries. Nothing has changed, has it? Are we rowing a boat still anchored in filth? Walking out of hell gave me the strength to be free. 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 Affected and moved by the recent crimes and atrocities against women, the artist has decided to present a film called It Was a Summer Afternoon. It was a summer the afternoon. film is picturized and conceptualized by her. As happy as one can be as a child. As excited as one can be about life as a toddler. Do I remember the first time it happened? Although she made this film a long time ago, it was still recently that she decided to edit and showcase it. Through this film, she aims to deal with the issue of abuse. Let's talk to her about the movie. I don't. But I remember. Uh, this film I did, it was a summer afternoon, it is about abuse, it is about breaking of boundaries and uh, sort of being, uh, um, it is an abuse of any kind that I talk about here and it is about uh, how that the victim or the person who is abused, how uh, first there is shame, you know, you, you go through that period of shame the fact that it has happened to you, you can't understand. Then uh, you don't want to talk about it, share it with the people who are closest to you. Is and uh, then the fact that, that the helplessness, Help. that nothing can be done about it. And the fact that shame or that hurt and everything becomes anger. Yes. And how that anger sort of becomes a volcanic uh, change, it brings about a volcanic change in the victim and how uh, how that victim feels and how the victim deals with that kind of a problem. And I've tried to work about this and the whole film is about one single person, the present of that person, the past, the childhood and the con subconscious mind, the mind which is constantly working in spite of the fact that there, everything is, is going on. And here I wanted to deal not only with the issue of a feminine issue, but it was an issue it's which deals strong. with abuse of any kind, you know. It is about how we are constantly breaking boundaries and invading into others, only uh, not even realizing it, it is that we are, uh, you know, throwing our strength around. Does everything have to be complicated with me. I found my definition of strength walked. You know, I used to just keep writing about, uh, you know, various things and I had not thought about it as any, uh, that I would take it out somewhere because there were so many other constraints that I had. I think I didn't even have the courage to come out with something like that because uh, I used to see myself as a mother, daughter, wife. I think more, not like a mother, I think as a mother I have become a much more bolder person, it has made me and uh, as a uh, as a wife i used to feel very constrained uh, doing a lot of uh, expressing the way i wanted to 
and it was only after the fact that I broke that mold and I thought that now I did not have so much of baggage and I could walk free and you know do the things that I wanted to do so it is uh, that only in 2004 I made it into a uh, I shortened it and made it into a poetry form and then later it was edited and re-edited by various, you know, and uh, so it kept on and it is only now that it has come about as a, I thought that it was, it has matured as a film and I, I could show it. And it is being shown at India Art Festival uh, at Kala Ghora and, and one of the book releases that I have now. God. Will I ever be able to figure myself out? Help. I need help. But what do I say? Whom do I tell? Why do I need help? Am I mad? Have I imagined it happening to me all these years? Will they believe me? Am I responsible for what happened? But listen. I'm divine, because she was divine too. And I know she felt the same. But maybe I'm not as strong as her. I did show this film yesterday for the first time at an art college in Jaipur. Uh, it was a girls art college and it, uh, it was very nice to show it there because they were all young girls and uh, they really felt connected and the fact that uh, everybody also uh, there was a question that what is uh, why was I calling uh, the, the who was I referring to as that other woman you know that uh, is she divine to what was I talking about was I talking about a goddess was I talking about so uh, you know it is uh, as I t told you earlier it, it is about the constant mutilation of the environment we live in that's what I was also mentioning too, that we have to be, uh, we have, uh, I think we talk more about being sensitive and about the empathy. It is so much more easier to uh, go on a social networking site and maybe I do that also and mention about the issues. Of course, that is also important because that puts us all in a certain awareness because uh, we are all into that kind of uh, space just now that we find it easier. But at the same time, when it comes to the real life, we should be able to deal with it. We should have the courage to talk about it. Comparing what was the situation of women a few years ago this is what she observed. No, no, it is changing. You can't say that it is not changing. I see a change in myself as a woman because I feel that now uh, at least we are able to realize that there is a problem. Why as a woman, actually as a woman, I am a 53-year-old woman. I am still scared of walking down on the road. Why? Alone at night. We were... Able, we at, I think at the time when I was younger, we would accept it in spite of the fact that we, it is not that we were not going out, but it was an accepted norm that, ha, aise to hota hai. You know, but now there is a change. I'm not able to accept it. I want to give that liberty to my children. I'm not here to find justice anymore. I spent a lifetime seeking it, and I don't care about it. to get it out of my system. Why should I suffer this About the commodification of my... and commercialization of women, oh, please, these I were her thoughts. Somebody. The blame she lies with us, within us. And uh, at all levels, uh, you know, we have to be the change. It is about us in the end, uh, how strong we are as people, how strong we are about our own convictions and how strong we are understanding the problem. Because we we cannot now, now we just can't shove it under the carpet and say, okay, it is not a problem. My, uh, my one of my relatives will feel bad if I sort of expose uh, this person who has uh, abused my child. Or I, uh, I sort of just say, okay, wo to sab theek hai, you know, but beta, aapko to aise karna hai, hamari family mein to aise nahi hota hai. We have to get out of it. I think we uh, we are no more into that situation. 
when we can push anything under the carpet we cannot because we have seen what has happened we may say that okay this has not happened none of our relatives have done something like that hamare ghar ke bachcho ne to aisa kuch nahi kiya are but it, it is it is you are a part maybe you just lended a, a kind of a support to an a, a, an a, uh unknowingly you an ext- uh, you have extended a support to a feeling like that which has caused the problem that we are in and i totally feel that we have to be uh, we have to accept the responsibility we cannot say because uh, we are a part of this social system that we belong to and we owe it all to it yes we uh, we have to be responsible each one of us my faith in the divine maybe now i fully understand her plight but should women still face it after centuries nothing has changed has it are we rowing a boat still anchored in filth walking out of hell gave me the strength to be free 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 With this it's time for a very short break in this edition of expressions we'll see you at the other side of the break till then you don't go anywhere welcome back to this edition of expressions after the break in a country where the situation of women is worsening day by day It is ironical to see that women are worshipped as goddesses and devis. There is a shloka in Sanskrit which says yatra naryastu pujyante tatra devta ramante. It means that gods reside in those places or homes where women are worshipped. It is heartbreaking and saddening to see that the situation has changed drastically over the few years. Let's have a word with the artist. She has been working on the theme the golden womb since the last 20 years. Her work is symbolic of the progress and recycling the thought processes in the human mind. I think all my works somehow oh, get engulfed in a womb and that is the space that I celebrate the most uh, because for me uh, you know the more I contemplate on the subject of womb the more i think about it and the more i paint i i feel that everything now the conversation between you and me a womb is not only a biological space that i'm talking about a womb does not have to be only about any space where the creation is taking place any space where there's proactivity and where the, there is a uh, positively uh, recycling uh, that that space which is positively recycling and making everything multiply and grow bigger is a space which is a womb and so this is not only a biological space that i talk about it is also a psychological uh, spiritual and also physiological in at every different level uh, a womb is there so that's why uh, i feel that every everything becomes engulfed in that hiranyagarbha or that golden womb so we are in a bubble we are in a space you know like a space which is a larger womb which in which we all are constantly happening creating recreating there's nothing is dying there's nothing as death it is all being rejuvenated and recycled everything is growing so it is only i see each and everything as living for me there's nothing which is in animate So the moment we are talking of everything don't you think that energy that something which is a part of that complete universal whole this super consciousness that we call it is definitely a part of that and i like to celebrate that aspect which is constantly creating which is constantly giving us that source of energy that life
A close view of her works reveal that not even a single space, even the size of a dot, is left empty on the canvases. Her works bring into focus a woman's physical attributes, her intellect, thoughts, dreams and realities. And then it is so simple. You know, it is that's what we are as people. I, uh, I do not differentiate myself from my work at all. I think as an artist, I had the liberty to express what I wanted to in my language, and I could create that language. That was the most beautiful thing. And the fact that I did not uh, confine to a specific uh, mode, because I like, I, I like the freedom I like the freedom to express as a painter, as an artist, and that's why I do not confine to any specific medium also, and I mix a lot of mediums. At the same time, what I'm expressing, it is a very multi-layered thing that I'm doing, that uh, we're working at various subconscious levels at the moment. Even when we are talking to each other, it is what we are saying is not what we are thinking. What we are thinking is not what is in our subconscious. And what is in our subconscious is not what we are speaking. So we are constantly delving into a lot of layers. And that is what brings about a lot of layers. I like to express each of my work according to the present moment that I am in. And what happens is that it becomes a, multi-layer, multi-dimensional and uh, I start with a lot of washes, I start with a simple prayer of Guru Shukra Vikineshwaraya Nama on the canvas, let, let the uh, lot of luxuries and lot of intellect, intellect come and reside on my work and uh, I ask the canvas because uh, I don't think I'm giving the canvas anything. I feel if the space like canvas or a paper was not there, I would not be able to do anything. You know, so it is, uh, I should have the humility to ask them, please give me, give me what you can. Because I firmly believe that till the time that canvas was uh, exciting enough for me to work on, I could not. So, uh, and while working, I, I, it's not about just what I want to say at that moment. I do a lot of reading and listen to that kind of a music. If I'm talking about Saptamatrikas, then I like to delve in the Saptamatrikas for the three or the four months, four months where I'm working on Saptamatrikas alone. I do not mix it with any other work. Like I would like to visit the places which talk about these energies I would draw them, I would hear the mantras, or I would hear the scriptures which are talking about that certain uh, energy. And then I would paint, I would draw, I would perform, I would sculpt. So all the things happen together. And when all these things are happening together, you become yourself just a medium, nothing more than that. You are just a medium for these energies to pour yourself out. And that's what I do. I, I firmly believe in that. I do not believe that I created a certain aspect or something uh, purely by my own instinct or by my subconscious or by the stories that I had because there's a complete environment. And then, of course, the environment and the present moment in which you are living, the present life that which you are living, you cannot avoid that. So that keeps coming inside my works, like the teacups and the books and the certain by balconies or my terrace or you know all these things they become a part of that work and that becomes very interesting and then also I do not believe in a space called Shunya I do not believe that there is a space called nothing it is not there because that nothing also has a space that is uh, sort of um, supported by the space. The Shunya is supported by the space which is not Shunya, 
if there was the space which is not shunya there would be no space called shunya so i like to express that in my work so there are a lot of layers in my work there are about 12 to 13 layers of colors i put first was there is a silver layer then there's there are various washes of acrylics gouache and other colors and then i start with pen and ink and then i do gold leafing and over the gold leafing again i do my paintings so uh, it is very expressive of what i do and what i think life is all about yes with this it's time for us to wrap up for this edition of expressions for this week we'll see you again next week till then you take good care of yourself this is your host arbuda signing off namaskar